Hello, welcome to the month of March. I'm a super judge and I'm so excited today. Praise God. You know why? Because the Lord have given his word. Now, it's a new month. And right now, we are, we, we are having a prayer, a prayer and fasting meeting going on, which you can join us via Zoom. The link, the, the Zoom ID and information, they are all on your screen right now. You can join us at the next watch praise god so you hear more details of what the lord is saying concerning this month and get ourselves um, join us in getting ourselves prepared for the month now while i was meditating and, and talking to the lord concerning what to look forward to this month because remember jesus said the holy spirit will show you things to come now the lord gave his word to me from the book of Isaiah chapter 32 Isaiah chapter 32 and verse 15 it says until the spirit be poured upon us from on high and the wilderness be a fruitful field and the fruitful field be counted for a forest now things are going to be so bad until this happens until the spirit is poured upon us from on high now when this scripture came to me the word of the lord came unto me and he said son in the month of march i'm going to pour water on the earth now that's how the word of god came to say i'm going to pour water on the earth now what does that signify that means there's going to be some form of relief where things have been difficult expect some measure some kind of relief this month you see god takes care of you and no matter what's going on he's looking out for your good and so if god is good why does he let evil things happen no it's not as though god sits down and say look they are they are so peaceful let's give them some evil no always remember we have a devil out there that's number one number two we have a world who's so filled with disobedience disobedience you see sometimes people just think it's god that orchestrates all these things i'll give you a very simple example if you are a fam family man for example and then you you buy uh, you cook you know the measure of gas you use at home now cooking gas i mean you use at home and so you you get that ready and everything and now someone from your house leaves the the cylinder on now you have planned okay this gas is going to last us a month or two weeks or whatever it is and someone turns it and forget to put it off even though there was no fire to it see and 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 it began to waste and after a while guess what's going to happen that gas or that cylinder it's not going to carry you to the time that you planned it now did god do you any evil did satan do you any evil that's the result of carelessness see now the evil we see in the world it's simply as a result of men's disobedience which which results from men's carelessness carelessness to obey god carelessness to follow the pattern that god has set see listen everything god created was created to function in a certain way and because we have been so distant from god we have not submitted our minds to be educated the way god wants everything to function when people talk about climate change, when people talk about, oh, all these, these floodings, all these things happening and all that, I'm telling you the truth. It's simply because man have not functioned on the earth the way God planned for him to function. It's as simple as that. So disobedience, even in the activities of man on the earth, that's what's causing everything. It's not God punishing anybody. No. But in the midst of this, God still sends relief. And because he is a good God. 
Now, if God sends you relief, but you're not in place to receive it, what will happen? You won't get that relief. And when you don't get it, you suffer. Look through scriptures. The people were sinning and serpents came and was biting them and many people died in the wilderness. And when Moses cried to the Lord, God says, Moses, build a serpent of brass and raise it up. Anyone who is beaten by the serpent and looks at that serpent of brass will not die. And Moses had to erect that serpent of brass. Now imagine someone say, what do you mean? We are dying here, you're telling us to look at the serpent of brass. They will die. Why? Because God has sent help in the midst of that situation. But they are unwilling to follow the help that God has sent. Last week, I remember the Lord, word of the Lord came to me concerning, I, I saw a vision where an angel was going around marking people. And I knew this marking was to separate them from any kind of evil or disaster that is coming on the earth. And while I, 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 I was looking at that vision, the word of the Lord came to me and he says, warn your people that they should be serious with their tithes and offerings. Someone say, oh, must we, must it? You see, you see, there is something a lot of people don't understand. Someone say, ah, if you don't tie it, God will, not, um, God will not curse you. God never said he will curse you because of tight. He never said that. Oh, in Malachi, he said, you are cursed with the curse. You see, understand the scriptures. Have the right mindset. Simply apply your mind. It's English. Ye are cursed with a curse. It's not the same thing as I have cursed you with a curse. God says, you are robbing me by in tithes and offerings. And God says, because of that, you are cursed. Now, what was God trying to say? Remember, God wasn't speaking in judgmental tone to them. God was speaking and seeing how to bring them out from the situation because they were crying to him. They were crying to him. And he began to explain to them why they are going through the things they go through. So someone say, ah, people that tell you if you don't tithe, God is going to curse you. God never said he's going to curse you. But the truth about it is, if you don't obey God, you will eventually walk in a curse. You will walk in a curse. A perfect example I give is the prodigal son. You remember the story of the prodigal son. Now, he was, he was okay in his father's house. They were all together. The father was a wealthy man. But he, he, he began to have some thoughts in his mind and he decided to ex execute those thoughts. He said, Father, give me my portion of the inheritance. And guess what? When he made that request, the father had to come up with a plan to separate a portion for him. Yes. And the father didn't say, the father didn't separate all the portions and say, now nah, this is your own, this is your elder brother's own. And no, no, no. The father had to cut out a portion for him. Now, what thoughts were going, coming to his heart? Covetous thoughts. I'm not satisfied with this thing that we all all need together. I want to have my own. That's covetousness. That's, a, that's how the spirit of covetousness works. And so he took his portion the father had given to him, went away. You know the story, he squandered it. Now, why did he squander it? Because he, he stepped out of his father's territory. He stepped out of his father's benevolence, out of his father's blessing, and walked right into a curse. Now, the father didn't send him away with a curse. The father didn't tell him, okay, take now, let me see what will become of you. No. The father genuinely, he requested for it. The father gave him. But guess what? He walked right into a curse. And so everything he had diminished. It took years. But eventually everything finished. Finished so much. This is, this is why it's a curse. Not just that his money finished. The kind of life he was living, number one. Number two, 
the thoughts and imagination that came to his heart even when the world finished shows you this man was walking in a curse i can still do it by myself i can still do it by myself and then he began to struggle and struggle and struggle until he began to drag feed with swines in the midst of all that it never changed one moment the love the father had for him never see and finally when he decided okay i'm going to go back home he went back home and did you notice when he got back home the father threw a party for him and and the father didn't say okay now that you have come you've exhausted all your portion so what do we do now let me give you a few sheep and go to go and start your own life no he came back right in to the inheritance again see that now now that's exactly what god was saying in the book of malachi he said you're, you're walking in a curse so when people say oh eh, eh, god will not not curse anyone because we're already blessed you are blessed live like a blessed man bless people tight it's as simple as that bless people give offerings now when you stop doing those things you actually use your legs to step out of the blessing and begin to create a new way in a curse and it's just a matter of time i'm telling you the truth it's just a matter of time which is simpler walking and enjoying the blessing or trying to find a new way that god has not opened for you so when the lord says be serious tell your people to be serious about tithes and offerings listen to me even now that the lord is saying to you i'm pouring water on the earth it's because of his children it's because of his children he will not watch his children suffer he will not watch, watch his children going through all those wickedness in the hands of men no he wouldn't he will always create because he's a blesser and when you walk the path of the blessing you will see the hand of god rescue you from situations you will see the hand of god make things easy for you in the midst of difficulties that's what the spirit of god is saying to you in this month i heard the lord says i'll pour water on the earth and just like the scripture where it says in isaiah 32 verse 15 says until the spirit be poured out from on high now what happens when the spirit is poured out from on high the wilderness will become a fruitful field and hey it didn't stop there and that one that was a fruitful field will become a forest see that now so whatever level you find yourself trust me there is a blessing coming for you in this month of march god is pouring water on you praise god yes he's pouring water on you when god says water he's not just talking about um, um physical water but then if the ground needs physical water it's going to have it praise god if the ground needs physical water it's going to have it see that but god is pouring his spirit so expect fresh ideas expect grace supernatural grace that you have never seen before expect favor favor before men especially favor before men that's why you've got to be humble before the lord and allow god guide you and you are going to see supernatural things happen this month you're going to see god show himself in a manner you have never seen him before this month praise god the spirit of god is going to overshadow you with glory i'm speaking to god's children now and you will walk in the glory of god like never before therefore in the name of the lord jesus i speak to your body anything that will obstruct you from walking in this glory that thing is being separated from you right now in the name of the lord jesus christ you will not find yourself in the midst of those that will rot those those that will will be punished you will not find yourself in their midst 
The Spirit of God will always guide you out of situations that will be terrible. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray over you. The hand of the Lord will guide you this month. The Spirit of God will give you eyes that see and ears that hear. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I declare it is well with you. It is well with your body. I declare health is yours. Favor is yours this month. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. I have to share this with you. But listen, I'm expecting in our next um, time of prayer today, follow the Zoom link and get just join us at the next watch. We're using West African time. So look at West African time. I know the next watch. Just join us in this meeting and have a wonderful time with us. God bless you and have a wonderful month. Bye.